Oh man. I want him to get a real real YouTubing chair. Boat. A motorcycle. The girlfriend. Yeah, all that stuff would be good. Hello folks. Welcome again for I am the one, the only Hobo Tom. I do apologize. Um there are times in the week or times of the year, I'll say that much. Where you kinda get wrestled out. I've gone, I think, two or three weeks straight every day of talking about pro wrestling. Wow. So I do apologize for this video getting up way too late. Um, I also don't think I'm going to catch AEW tomorrow. I'm going up to Jacksonville to see a friend, and I have no idea when I'll get back. But I forget if AEW is highly... And it's the holidays. It's almost Thanksgiving. Unfortunately, I'm getting a little bit wrestled out. The good news is, in four more days, four, I get my live streaming privileges back. Because those... Oh, wow. Someone just died. But Or, or Crack House blew up. Meth Lab, I'm sorry. They don't have crack houses. That, crack houses don't blow up. Meth labs blow up. But, yep, so in four more days, I got to go live. And probably my first live stream returning. Numero uno. Which I have to make a video, which I have to make a preview for. Probably Saturday. Will be Starcade. So that'll be fun. That'll be different. Um, I hope I be, I'll hope I'll be able to do that. I can't guarantee that. This is a Monday Night Raw show. I'm probably gonna have get it because of Thursday. Um, I'm gonna have a Thursday Thanksgiving episode of the Daytona Beach Bomb Fight League, and I still have to make that card too. That's not good. <laughs> I have one more character to make. So that's always a good thing. And then Friday, I'll do a SmackDown review. I think I'm going to skip AEW. I think Impact, they just had like their whole gimmick thing. NWA is fun, but I don't think I'm going to get to that tonight because it's already 2 a.m. and I have to wake up someone ish. So let's talk about Monday Night Raw. Yeah, I do apologize for everyone. Hello, Fettuccini69. In response first to your comment, I've been on a 90-day YouTube live stream ban. I was very bad. I was naughty. I had to go sit in the hobo corner for 90 days, but in four more days, I get to live stream again. So you're going to get some more content from me. And I'll try to be a little bit better. Because I thought, I didn't think AEW would have all the capabilities that they do have. Obviously, I was wrong, though. And I felt shame. Because I cannot bring you, my YouTube audience, the content that you guys actually deserve. But little Fetty Chidi is 69. You know what? You're going to make this new video I made in my hiatus. Because... Natalia Superior? Becky Lynch Inferior? Okay, so now it's time to talk about some uh, Monday Night Raw. And this will be good because this will give me a chance to clean up my computer. Because my computer right now is, is a fun house. Not the good fun, ho fun house either. I think I have like... This is video number 46. Wow, I never let it get that high. I've just been a very bad YouTuber recently. I will try to be better though and be somewhat more responsibly a little bit more regularly. I'll try. Um, so it starts off. Seth Rollins starts to call it the entire AEW locker room. Asshole. Asshole. 
Uh, what's that? What's that asshole? Oh, uh, someone was be being called a, a naughty name. Uh, he starts to call the lo raw locker room. Eventually, he calls out Randy Orton. Randy Orton says, "Screw you! I'm I'm, I'm out of here." Uh, he does the same thing with Charlotte. Charlotte's like, <laughs> "Yeah, right. Do you know who my daddy is? I'm gone." Uh, Ray's like, "Dude, I've been wrestling." Before you even saw it, before you even had a TV set. Eventually, everyone leaves. Kevin Owens kind of is up to Seth. Seth said things to Kevin Owens that made him mad. And we got the stunner, which is nice. So Kevin's, Kevin Owens kind of stands up to Seth. Seth says some lots of nice things to Kevin Owens. And he eats stunner for it, which is always good. Let me start with a wrestling match. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Uh, it's Bobby Lashley versus, versus Titus O'Neil. This was a weird draw. Actually, looking back at it, it wasn't necessarily bad. It didn't necessarily start great. The end was good. The or uh, the near to end was good, and the end was meh. It was good. It was okay. So we start off uh, Bobby Lashley. Take on Titus O'Neil. Lashley just beats him up. That's all that has to be said. Uh, he just beats up poor Titus O'Neil. Um, and then eventually, Crazy Rusev. Rusev, Kubria, Rusev. Crazy! Because he comes, <laughs> he beats up. Bobby Lashley, they, they brawl up to the stage. I'll say Bobby Lashley won this match because that was the best that finished, baby. Rusev went cuckoo. Um, so with Rusev just beats up Lashley by the stage, please come out because there was a 90-day restraining order. Uh, the whole preview to this was that Rusev was wanted to be good to yeah, Rusev and sign autographs, and he got handed a restraining order 90 feet. Again, it's not necessarily the longest distance. Why do I want to say it's it's a weird number? I always thought it was like 50 feet. I don't know. I've never had a restraining order. And I've never had to get a restraining order. It's probably pretty good too. But So Lashley beats up Bobby Lashley. The police cuff him. And, then he, and he tackles Lashley. And Lashley falls off the stage. Poor Bobby Lashley. Again, one of many reasons why you never want to fool around with another man's wife. Never works out for you. Especially if they live in Texas. That's a whole other issue, though. Uh, then we have Authors of Pain are return. Yes, yes, yes. They take on Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins. AOP just destroy them. I mean, for the most part, Kurt Hawkins tried. Um, it wasn't so. It wasn't a true squash match. Might as well have been a squash match, though. Uh, did the super collider the last chapter? All fun stuff. It's good to see the AOP back. Uh, Kurt Hawkins eats the pin in the squash. Again, it wasn't. It didn't feel like a true squash match. They 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 tried. So therefore, this match was another ham sandwich. And the show actually kind of picks up a little bit because now we have Andrade Sin Almas taking on Ha 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 Akira Tozawa. Now I remember who did that. I should center myself better. Um, so with this match, this was a fun, fast match. I'll tell you what, Akira's, Akira Tozawa got in a lot of offense because he had two squash matches. I was worried for Akira Tozawa that this was going to be a third squash match. Really wasn't, though. Which is really good to see. I mean, he puts in some offense. Oh, that height he gets. I don't know how he does it. Um, uh, Andrade actually is significantly bigger than Akira Zazawa. I was kind of shocked at that. Um, uh, Selena Vega didn't make much of an impact in the match, which is good. Again, she, she always distracts Akira Zazawa. Ha! 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 It's like a Three Stooge thing, almost. Um, Andrade, of course, does he does get the advantage 
He's a bigger, stronger guy. Again, this was a good match. Definitely more than a squash match. Akira Tozawa got actually a pretty good deal of offense in. Uh, Johnny did hit the hammerlock DDT with a little extra sink with a leg sweep on it. That's always good to see. I'll tell you what, this was fun. This is a good cheeseburger match. Then Alistair Black said, Buddy Murphy wants to pick a fight with me. I'll oblige him. I'll pick a fight with him. Although when I do that, I have to like lower the lights or something. Wait, I can't lower the lights. Oh, well. And then we have a returning! Delete! 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 Chispa! Delete! Wall! Delete! Person at door! Delete! Oh, I hope no one's at that door. That'd be pretty bad. But delete! Matt Hardy returns. It's always good to see. He takes on the big bad Aussie. Buddy Murphy. He's an Aussie. I like to use my Australian accent. Which is actually better than the way some New Zealanders speak at my school. Sheila. Because I like to have a cold, frosty one. Especially on Thursdays. Because that, that's Foster's night. But Foster's is Australian for beer. And I'll have a Foster's. With a Vegemite sandwich, and then put a shrimp on the barbie and use that as a hors d'oeuvre. Invite some Sheilas over and have a real buck a bang. But, uh, wh whatever. Uh, Buddy Murphy takes it to Matt Hardy. Matt Hardy, actually, he looks in, in great shape. Every time Matt Hardy comes back, and I don't know if it has to do with diet or the fact that he actually gets to relax for a change. Um, he looks in good shape. He has slowed down a lot. Again, number one undefeated is old is Father Time. No one beats Father Time, folks. Not even not even any Father Time cannot be deleted. Delete. Obsolete. But Matt Hardy looked pretty good. I mean he, he did hit a couple moves. I guess more than a squash match. He's definitely putting Buddy Murphy over. Um, again, kind of classic Matt Hardy offense. I think the only thing he missed was really the delete headbutt into the turnbuckle. That would have completed it. He, he did hit eventually a side effect. Which was good to see. Um, and something happened to Buddy Murphy. I couldn't exactly tell when it happened. He got like a little bloody nose. Unless he was hanging up. Doing that too. I don't know, but that nose got a little bit bloody. Um, it was in that match. Uh, eventually, he did hit Murphy's Law, which is actually pretty cool looking. I'm kind of sad. I'm mixed about this. It wasn't that bad of a match. You know what? I'll upgrade this, too. This was a cheeseburger match. Then we have Alistair Black. He came out to pick a fight with Buddy Murphy. Uh, Alistair Black shows up to the ring, just beats him up. He blocks, he blocks a punch, blocks a kick. Alistair Black throws some knees, throws a kick. Buddy Murphy says, "Ah, I'm not, I'm not done with this. I just had a match. I'm out of here." So I don't think that was even a match. Ah. Uh, and then Charlotte's breast did a promo. I mean, Charlotte Flair did a promo. Yeah. Charlotte Flair did a promo. Uh, then AJ Styles comes out to the ring. He's supposed to take on Umberto Carrillo. But he gets jumped by the OC. They, I'll tell you what. This probably was the, the spot of the night when the OC hit uh, uh, Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows hit a magic killer onto the steel step. That looked cool. Uh, and then what happened is that AJ said, like, well, if he can't fight me, no one can. Uh, Ricochet comes down and says, hey, you're no super. AJ says, you're no superior. You're late. Randy Orton says, like, I beat you already. Drew McIntyre just invites himself to the ring. I forget what I forget what AJ said about Drew McIntyre. He didn't say much. Uh, Ray Mysterio, he says, yeah, you just lost. 
Um, AJ's the new locker room leader. He said, you know what? I'll make it easy. You guys just fight, fight it out and see who wins. And and we'll have that match later. And he's like looking. He's like, let's go. It's like, whoa. And Carl Anderson's like, no, dude, that's a good idea. But Gal is like, yeah, that is a good idea. Have them have a match that you can wrestle them in. And they just like, uh, okay. I wonder if AJ was so much trolling. Well, well, I'll get to that. So we have a fellow for a way. I'll tell you what. This was fun. It was Randy Orton versus Ricochet versus Rey Mysterio versus Drew McIntyre. Starts off uh, Ricochet versus Rey for a while. They got the heels outside the ring. And those two are so quick. It was so fun to watch. Uh, Ricochet kind of got beat up a little bit. Uh, so he goes to the outside. And it's kind of the formula. One person gets beat up, they go to the outside. A few people take over. But I'll tell you what. In this match, Randy Orton and Drew McIntyre were amazing. Because they traded chops. Oh! They're going to be so sore and Red and hamburgy. Probably all today. Oh, they were some heavy shots. Randy Orton seems to be enjoying himself more too. I don't know if it's it's like the age that's beginning to mellow Randy Orton out, or the fact that he's put in at least somewhat fairly high profile matches now, going for the U.S. title. That or he just. Seems to be enjoying himself. He's no longer crotchety Randy Orton. He's like, you know what? I'll go along with this. This actually seems really good. And that's been the one knock on Rand the one real knock on Randy Orton is that Randy Orton does does things when Randy Orton's interested in doing things. When you get an interested Randy Orton in something, you have A plus Randy Orton. Uh, again there with the traded chops. Uh Ray eventually gets his second win. Um Again, by doing his running off the ropes, there was like a semi Tower of Doom, which was f always fun to see. Uh, it was Drew McIntyre in the crucifix position, does his kind of sit up thing from there, uh, takes down Randy Orton, who was super perplexing. I think Ricochet. Ricochet can take bumps like anyone. He does have to do that. Um, Orton eventually gives gives RKO to a bunch of people. But eventually, Rey Mysterio hits the 619. And wow. Rey, Rey Mysterio Jr. wins. Rey, Rey, Rey. I'll tell you what. This, this was a fun. Good, it was good. It was exciting. I got pumped for it. This was a good surf and turf match. And then this led to, of course, a U.S. title defense between AJ Styles and Rey Mysterio Jr. I'll tell you what, I don't know if this is a knock on AJ Styles or if it's just the booking, but I'll tell you what, AJ Styles, he does such good TV work. His, the, whenever AJ's been on a pay-per-view, it's kind of been hit or miss. This thing with... Nakamura was a complete confusion confusion mess. Uh, his match against Brock was really good, though. And his match against Randy Orton was really good. So it's, it's kind of hard to... I think the thing is, AJ Styles is such a good pro wrestler. When the WWE takes the reins off, take the reins, the leash, the muzzle, whatever, whatever silly synonym you want to call it, takes, yeah, takes the leash off AJ Styles and says, have a match. AJ Styles can put together one heck of a match. In fact, this match was amazing. Um, when they, when WWE seems to rein in or reel in a little bit, AJ Styles, it's like they're, they're only exposing only a part of what he could do. Because like on pay-per-views where it's there's whenever he seems like there's some time constraint, he's not so good. He, AJ Styles needs a natural flow to a match, and honestly, those are his best matches, whether on TV or pay per views. 
I mean, AJ Styles and Rey Mysterio. Whoa, this is a dream match. Uh, AJ Styles again eventually goes, I mean, he works over Ray good. Again, his work, he works over Ray's knees. Again, New Japan AJ Styles is best AJ Styles. Uh, Mysterio, again, he counters AJ moves. He's, Ray Mysterio is that quick, he can counter the moves. Um, AJ set him up, and eventually the club, there was enough of their shenanigans, the ref said, you're out of here. Kick the club out. <laughs> and for and um, AJ Styles, AJ Styles always gets nailed in the nuts. Whether it's New Japan, I forget if it happened a lot in TNA. I think it happened a lot in TNA too. But he went, he wanted to deliver a baseball slide to Rey Mysterio. Mysterio went out of the way, and AJ slides right into the post. Oh, wow. The other thing is that uh, Rey Mysterio pulled out the, the a wheelbarrow bulldog, hit a Lucha Destroyer. It's not like a Canadian Destroyer, except for it's, it's more like a powerbomb. It's like a flippy powerbomb. Um, AJ eventually does, does take out the ref. The OC come out, but then the other people from the throwaway, Randy Orton, starts, starts to RKO everyone. Drew McIntyre beats up people. It's fun. And I'll tell you what, in this match, Jerry the King Lawler is best in color commentary because the king because he actually added a, a lot to this match. Uh, he just made it that much more exciting, that much more interesting. He became that much more involved in the match. And I'll tell you what, the king gets involved, the fans get involved, the wrestlers get involved, I get involved. That's a filet mignon match. And Rey Mysterio wins. Whoa. The U.S. belt finally like the belt on Raw. That's excellent. That means they either have to bring back either probably the TV title or make the internet. Or I think, did they ever have the internet championship? I forget. I saw that on uh, 2K17. Maybe they did at one time have an internet champion. Again, so they now they have so now the main belt, which Brock holds. The, uh, a uh, USA, uh, United States title, which is kind of like the main. And then we get into. Oh, someone has a sign. <laughs> Ron Spears, CM Punk. Oh, yeah. Ron's called out. It's like CM Punk. He's like, yeah, well, well, he, he doesn't want to wrestle me. So. Rollins, you, you can't hold. You can't lace up CM Punk's boots. And CM Punk was good, but not that good. Uh, so next we had Charlotte Flair versus Asuka. Asuka just comes in the ring. Asuka's amazing. Asuka, Kyrie saying, we're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. Once they stop, I don't know if they stop their packaging and if this is their new package or if WWE gave them the package. I don't know who to give credit to because those two look utterly amazing. Asuka looks absolutely terrifying. She looks like, oh, here's the word. She looks like a Yoma, which is pretty cool. And and, and, and so does Kyrie Sane, but Kyrie Sane looks like creepy. Like creepy hot. Can you be creepy hot? Kyrie Sane and Asuka are. They're like, like, Two years ago, Rosemary Hot. <laughs> or, or, or Sue Young without her top hot. Susie Hot. Uh, but with this match, Asuka comes out. She just speaks Japanese. I have no idea. She could be Asuka tell, telling Charlotte Flair so many recipes um, of, on how to use cabbage for, from her, her kind of chun. Uh, YouTube thing, which, which I have to see another one of because Asuka is amazing. Um, whoever marries her is hey, Asuka. I'm single too. Um, eat cat also. 
but this was fun. Uh, Oscar and Charlotte. Uh, again, the t- uh, event eventually kind of they go back and forth, a lot back and forth. Um, they do like the yay boo strikes from the knees, which is which is new. From the knees is a little bit different. Um, tell what those chops. Charlotte does this. That's a hurt her boobies so much. And I'll tell you what, Oscar does have a new outfit because it looks a little skimpier too. Because there was like one camera shot right down the old rabbit hole, folks. Yeah. Oscar uh, eventually rolls Charlotte outside. She start, uh, Charlotte starts to chase Kyrie Sane around. Um, and the chops by Charlotte. Classic stuff. Um, she, Charlotte has a good moonsault. She had a, uh, she, she had a moonsault on Asuka. Uh, Kyrie Sane gets involved. She chased Kyrie Sane out of the ring. And then for some reason, Charlotte has cephitis. And the fact that she becomes very easily distracted by any wrestler coming down the ramp. It doesn't make sense because if they're like probably a good 20 feet away, it's going to take at least three seconds to get there. Uh, Charlotte, Put in that half Boston crab that looked great. Again, began to work over the legs, set, setting up for the eventual figure eight. Um, again, scrape uh, uh, the leg over the ropes and kick the ropes to do that. Kyrie Sane eventually does distract said referee, and the green mist. And this time, all the green mist came out. Charlotte must have learned something from her father. Because uh, I know in Rick, some of Ric Flair's m- matches, when he would bleed, his hair would be red, his face red, his neck red, his chin red, his chest red. He was just a bloody mess. Charles is doing the same thing with the, with the green stuff. So, again, that's 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 great. And, and who looks... There's a question for everyone out in the YouTube world. Who really looks cooler, Asuka or Kyrie Sane? I can't tell. It. But this was another really fun match. Uh, the fact that they're having Charlotte lose, but it's because of the green mist, though. The green mist is like the third most powerful mist because it's the green mist. If you get hit with the green mist and still come back, then you get hit with the red mist. And if you come back from the red mist, then you get black misted. Whoa. That's never a good sign. Oh, wow. I. This was actually that good. Actually, it was that good. Again, Charlotte has a little bit of also not only Sethitis, but Ortonitis, uh, Lesnaritis, where if it's a really interesting match and it's really good. Charlotte can put on an amazing wrestling match. When you put Charlotte against Lacey Evans and Charlotte doesn't care, Charlotte, Charlotte, she just phones it right in. Kind of like what she did at SummerSlam. Or um, Survivor, I'm sorry, Survivor Series. She just didn't seem that interested in it. And you can tell by kind of her expression, the way she kind of posed. Like really subtle stuff. I'll tell you what, I, I'm actually surprised I did this. This was a filet mignon match. And then we had Eric Brown come out. Um, he was going to face some jobber. Um, but jobber has the courage, though. Not only to get beat up, but to look in the cage. What's in the box? You don't want to look in the box. What's in the box? Or what's in the cage? So Rowan got upset with reason because the jobber looked in the cage where he shouldn't be looking. Um, again, it, this was your typical squash match. It was fun, though. Now I really want to know what's in the cage. So this was a good ham sandwich. Um, then the Iconics give a promo about shop uh, WWE for Black Friday. It's kind of like just a paid commercial and you can buy a replica 24-7 belt. Um, R-Truth thinks it's the real thing. 
Sorry, our truth you're wrong. So that was kind of fun. AJ Styles is an interview. He can't talk. He he really doesn't know what happened. He doesn't know. He doesn't have the words to put it. I I wonder if if they're trolling Jericho for not being able to say I'm sorry from the past AEW. I wouldn't put it past Vince to say, you know what? You're going to troll Jericho. You don't have to say anything either. Just try to mouth the words. And it doesn't work. I wouldn't put it past them, though. Um, I don't think that was super spontaneous. Again, it has that trolling feel to it. Uh, Lana. Lana's just terrible. Uh, I don't care what. I don't know. What, what? No. Then we had Seth Rollins versus Kevin Owens. Um, this was actually a fun match. Uh, Seth, Seth needs to be becoming the jackass heel, which is good. Kevin Owens, a very reluctant face. Uh, Kevin Owens, he's always looking for that stunner. Uh, they start to trade chops uh, sometime in in the match. You just hear CM Punk, CM Punk. CM Punk, CM Punk, CM Punk, CM Punk. And you can tell that was kind of getting to Seth. I think Kevin Owens loves the fact that Seth Rollins is getting so much garbage from the crowd. Uh, again, Seth begins to wear down Kevin Owens. He does, uh, he, he tries his first set of dives. He's blocked by Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens has that move scouted. Uh, after Kevin Owens gets worn down a little bit, the second set, he hits both of them. Uh, what else? Seth actually picked up a chair, then you don't know what happened to it. Uh, Kevin Owens tried to send on. Uh, Seth Rollins kicked his knees up. Seth grabs the beard. You know you're a heel when you start to grab, grab the beard. Get your hands off, off those. Off... Get your hands off there. I don't know. I forget when that was. I forget if it was a sign. Or, or if there was a chair when he grabbed Kevin Owens' beard. That's funny. Kevin Owens just talks all the time. He had a nasty looking DDT. Which is really good. He has frog splash. They start to trade kicks. Um, Kevin Owens hits a center, but he has to learn how to cover from said center. Because then AOP shows up. Whoa. They walk in in their suits looking... And weird shoes too. They look, they seem like long, longer than they should be. I don't know. Maybe it's because I, I, I part time in a shoe store. It's like they look weird. Who knows? Um, so they kind of stare at Kevin. They stare at Seth. They go over, and beat up Kevin Owens, and then they come. But after they give him a good working over, they just stare at Seth and walk away. Seth Rollins. Hmm. I wonder if they're going to be the architects of pain. Indeed. And this match was, was also fun, too. Um, even though it ended in kind of a dusty fashion, this was a dusty crab cake and and ribeye and eye, crab cake and eye round. Tough and tough match. And that was Raw. An interesting Raw after Survivor Series. Not a lot really happened. Some things did get advanced. Um, they kept on going from things they were talking about before Survivor Series. Survivor Series kind of interrupts everything. So they're they're back on course. I'll say it was a decent cheeseburger raw. So that's it. Um, again, really interesting. It'll be interesting to see what happens. Again, I will get the live stream. My R R and R show from or TLC. I think it's on the fourteenth. So they said it was three Sundays away. So it's either the 14th or, yeah, it would be the, actually, I think the 21st. I don't know. Or no, be the, yeah, that's so weird. Might be the 15th. I don't know. Whatever it is, I'll, I'll get more to that. 
Um, again, I'm going to do a lot more live streaming because live streaming for some reason is a lot more fun. Um, I can do a lot more impact work. Maybe. Again, it kind of mostly depends on my schedule. I'm terrified of WWE, though. I'll only live stream their pay per views. You're not going to see a live stream raw out of fear that I screw up again because I don't want to screw up again. I know there's going to be a AAA show coming up, an NWA pay per view. I might semi push my luck with that. Show parts of the match, not the whole thing. Um, something from Impact. I think Ring of Honor is also in December. And yeah, Ring of Honor is not that big, but. And then, of course, the tables, ladders, and chairs will be my R R R show. So that's it, folks. Everyone have a good night and have a safe pre-Thanksgiving shopping trip. Remember, it takes like 